Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about bullet journaling, one of my favorite topics, of course. Um, and so I've done several bullet journaling videos before where um, I talk about my process, um, I've done plan with me's, I've done stuff like that, um, bullet journal tours and flip throughs, but I've never really gone through how I personally go through and make a theme. So the way that I structure my bullet journal, and I have for the past about two years, is every month I establish a new theme, so that means new colors, I use a new font, I use a new little icon or theme, um, just to kind of separate the journal visually um, by month. So I start with a divider page and then every other page after that within the month, so that includes the calendar, my habit tracker, any other fun spreads I want to do, and weekly to-do lists. Those are all um, usually designed in the same theme or color scheme that I established for the month. So when you're flipping through the journal, it is really easily, you know, um, segregated by, by month. Using a theme is not only helpful to visually divide your journal, but it's also helpful to keep you refreshed and engaged with your journal throughout the year because if you're just doing one theme, throughout the entire year, it might get a little bit boring and you might lose interest, um, but doing a new theme every month when you get to sit down and think of something new, um, it really keeps me and hopefully you engaged with your journal um, artistically and creatively and also, you know, keeps you sticking to this really organized, um, great way to kind of organize your life. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you my process of how I think of a new theme because um, that's definitely something that people have talked to me about before. They're like, I don't really know what kind of thing I want to do. How do you think of ideas? Like, do you get them from online? Um, so I'll definitely show you some of the processes that I use to think of new themes and also show you how I did my new September 2022 theme. And I also wanted to say if you are interested in bullet journaling content, I post a lot of it over on my Instagram, which is at Gracie Creates. Um, over there I show every monthly spread that I do. Sometimes I do journals with me. I just started doing live streams of when I'm doing a new spread, which is really fun. Um, yeah, just lots of journaling content over there if you want ideas or um, helpful tips on how to keep your journal organized and fun. So with that being said, I'm going to bring you over to my desk so that we can um, start doing some journaling together. Okay, so we're here at my desk, um, which is where I do almost all my bullet journaling, of course. Um, and so I wanted to go over some of the ways that I find ideas for bullet journaling. The first way, which I feel like is always the easiest way, um, is when I will randomly just be doing something, I'll have an idea, and I write it down in my phone. So I have a note on my phone that just has ideas that I've thought of over the years. These are themes that I haven't done yet, but I think would be a good idea. I don't know when I want to do them, but I just write them down in this note. And when it comes time for me to sit down and do a new month, Sometimes I'll refer to this list and if I think one of them will fit really well for the month, then sometimes I'll just pick that. So like I said, that's definitely the easiest way because I did all the work beforehand. Um, but obviously if you're a creative, you know that that's not how it always works. Most of the time, um, you're not struck with creativity and inspiration right in that moment. So you have to do a little bit more work to um, think of a good idea. So um, I have been looking at this list that I have on my computer right now, but I don't really think any of these are going to fit really well for September, first of all. Some of these are really summery themes. Um, and then the other thing is, I've done a lot of like specific, like a media franchise uh, inspired uh, themes in my journal so far this year. I did a Star Wars month and I did um, a Harry Potter month. I did iCarly. So I have a couple more things like that in here that I don't want to do this year because I've already done many of those this year and I kind of want to, you know, just do something a little bit more freeform than that. So I don't think I'm going to use any of these themes that I had here for this month. So what we're going to do is go to my second favorite thing, which is Pinterest. Okay, so if you've seen any of my bullet journal um, themes before, you know that the three main things that I think of when I'm starting a theme are is there a font that I'm really interested in at the time, is there a color scheme that I really want to dive into, or is there a, an individual icon or something that I want to focus on. So I'll give you some examples of those. So I remember for the icon idea in January of 2021, I was really inspired by this little jukebox icon. This actual drawing is from, this is a really niche reference, if you ever watched Schoolhouse Rock when you were a kid, um, on the little like intro scenes when they show the title card for the song that's going to play, it was in a little diner and this little jukebox was uh, underneath the screen and it had this little rainbow frame around the text. 
Um, and when I was a kid, I was obsessed with this little jukebox for some reason because it was a little rainbow, cute little thing. And so when I was doing this bullet journal, I was like, oh, I would totally love to use that jukebox and that rainbow frame. So that was um, an example of a little icon that I wanted to use um, that I ended up using throughout the journal. So I did it again here. I did it on a few other pages. So that was kind of what sparked the idea for me. And then I ended up just choosing another typeface that um, I thought went well with this. So the second way that I like to do it is with a typeface. So one of my favorite things to pin on Pinterest is typefaces. I am a type addict. I'll give you an example from November of 2021. This was the theme that I did. I came across this beautiful curly typeface um, that I found on Pinterest, I'm pretty sure. And it reminded me of like Fleetwood Mac and kind of like cool fall autumn witchy vibes so I really wanted to do um, a color scheme and a um, design style that reflected that so this month it was the typeface that really inspired me to create the rest of this um, aesthetic vision around um, around it and then the last thing that I choose sometimes I just really want to do a certain color scheme which is I think the easiest way because once you establish a color scheme then you can really just kind of build off of that and do whatever you want I really wanted to do this red and maroon theme for Valentine's Day I'm a big, big Valentine's Day lover so I just I knew that I wanted to do that and then I kind of built these two little uh, dancing couple characters that are kind of supposed to be me and my boyfriend <laughs> around that and then I also picked a kind of quirky uh, typeface that went with it. Alright so now we can actually go to Pinterest and take a look around um, and see what we find. So this is my Pinterest homepage. I don't know if you've seen my last month's bullet journal theme which was this cool uh, 70, what do you call it, like sewing patterns theme. That's why you'll see a lot of the um, <laughs> images on my homepage right now are for that theme but um so what i do is if i am ever just scrolling through pinterest i have a couple boards that i pin things to so my most common one is my fonts board um so this is one of my favorite things to look at i just love looking at typefaces um i have actually you'll probably look through this and you'll see ones that i've already used because i've used so many of these um and it's just fun for me to look through. So if I'm really trying to be inspired, I'll look through here. If I find one I really like, then I'll build the theme around it. Um, but I also reference this board if I've already established a the theme and I'm just looking for the typeface to finish it off. So this is one of my favorite things. I'm constantly adding new things to this. Um, so yeah, that's my Pinterest board for fonts. And then what I'll usually do is I'll just scroll through my Pinterest home feed and I'll look for any images or ideas that really feel like they could work for a, um, for a theme. So sometimes it will just be like, this is a cool image. I could do, I've already actually done like a sunglasses kind of theme for this month, so I won't be doing this. But like, I really like the way that these glasses look or these ones with the eyeballs in them. So if I saw this and I liked it, then I could probably turn this into an entire theme if I wanted to. I could take the colors from this image or I could change them or just take the overall idea but draw my own sunglasses designs and um, do my own colors, do whatever it takes. You'll probably see I have a lot of retro 60s, 70s stuff on my homepage just because that's it's just my fave, it's my favorite aesthetic. The most amazing design came out of those periods, I think, so it's definitely one of the big things you'll see on my page. Oh, so this is a cool image. So sometimes it won't even be like an actual illustrated image that I'm looking at that is inspiring to me, but I love the way that this looks. And I'm actually going to pin it. <laughs> so I just pinned this, but um, I will probably come back to this image. This is really cool. I feel like this is something that could take up an entire spread page and just having different cool girls or whoever sitting on the couch wearing cool clothes. Like that would be a really cool idea. I feel like that would be awesome. So maybe I'll save that one for another month. I'm trying not to get distracted by all the cool home decor and stuff. That's <laughs> one of my favorite things to pin on Pinterest. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off and I'm gonna pin a couple things and then we'll see where we are. Okay, so I think I found something cool. So I saw this image right here. This is like a cool design of a cigarette or a matchbox. Um, and I really liked the way that this design kind of fit into the front cover of that um, and that made me think about a playing card deck which is really cool I don't know what has been up with me I've been thinking about cool 
like playing card decks a lot recently just design wise it's been really like inspirational to me and I don't know why I didn't think about that before I started filming this video but I think that would be really cool and of course I was trying to think of how to incorporate a cool retro aesthetic into it because you know it's my favorite so um, I pulled this off of this one and just these two images and I think this one off of my home page and then I just searched for like vintage decks of cards and other um, stuff like that like similar and like tarot card decks and stuff like that and I just pinned a couple of images over here to get me inspired I do want to remind you it's not always cool to directly copy something from another artist um, during my um, August 2022 bullet journal, a lot of these images were taken from real sewing pattern packages, but it was more because I wanted it to be authentic to the time period. Um, but most of the time when you're scrolling through Pinterest, I would advise not to just take directly from what you see, um, because, um, I mean, those were vintage commercial packaging, <laughs> but if it's by like an, another just artist who is living and cares about having their work infringed on, don't be that person. Don't just copy it. Think of something new. So um, I just pinned all these things for inspiration and then I'll probably just start sketching in my actual journal to see what I want to do. Now that I've picked out that kind of overall idea of doing the playing cards, I'm going to go over back to my fonts Pinterest board and try to like go through these and pick out some fonts that I think would work. So immediately I remember this typeface that I pinned a couple weeks ago I love this. I actually thought that this would be good for like a Halloween theme um, because the the weird angles and uh, it's kind of spooky, kind of witchy. But honestly, I feel like it could work for this playing card theme too. I also liked this one. This one was similarly witchy to me, but it felt a little bit more like 60s kind of. 60s psychedelic kind of spacey. This is so funny. If you ever watch like videos of people like in progress of doing something like this, like watching them create something or like put together an outfit, I always, sometimes I need to like stop watching videos like that because I will always, I feel like for some people I always want them to pick the other option like that they don't pick and then I get so mad when I'm watching the video I'm like oh, I wish you had picked the other thing. <laughs> They filmed this video however long ago. It's not like me saying that out loud is going to get them to change anything, but hopefully I pick the thing that you think that I should pick. I did really like that first one, but I think I'm going to go with this. Okay, so now that I kind of have those two things picked out, we're going to go over to my pens and pick out some colors. So I've talked about these 100 million times on my channel before, but these are my favorite pens. They're the Tombow water-based dual brush pens. They're the best, especially for bullet journaling take a look through what I have. I remember on the Pinterest board there was an image that was all monochrome. It was like all red and I would totally like to do that but I feel like I'm not confident in that. I feel like I am definitely my comfort safety zone is doing something really colorful and rainbow and doing something all monochrome is kind of scary to me. Okay. This is what I've got right now. This is my old bullet journal from last year. I have like several pages left in the back. So when I'm testing a new color scheme, sometimes I'll just do it back here. We'll do like a sketch and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, so it's been a few hours actually. I kind of got carried away doing some other stuff, but I uh, ended up kind of switching my plan. I usually start with a divider page, which is true, but um, I ended up actually coming over here. So um, every month I always do an illustration on the page next to my calendar for the month. Um, and so since I thought that the um, like card would fit perfectly on this page, I actually ended up just doing a full one here. And then I'm going to use this as kind of the basis for the cards that I draw on the divider. I was thinking about this um, little clay dish that I made a few weeks ago. I'll actually grab it so I can show you. So a few months ago I made this little dish out of clay. I painted this cute design in the middle of it. Um, so this is like a queen of flowers design. I thought this was such a cute idea so I think what I'm gonna do for the journal is on the divider page I'm gonna have a hand like holding like a hand of cards. I think I'm gonna do like a queen of flowers card. Um, this one is queen of stars. I might do like a peace sign or like a heart or something similar. 
um, or maybe a rainbow or something. So the one that I ended up doing here is like a Queen of Stars look. So I um, was inspired by some of those um, 60s, 70s poster designs that I was showing on Pinterest um, for this face. And I love this long, wavy 70s hair. Um, and I did some stars, and then I thought about this quote. Um, well, I guess it's not a quote. It's a lyric from a Taylor Swift song. Um, it says, he can't see it in my face, but I'm about to play my ace, which is from the song New Romantics. Okay, so I think where I left you last night, I was still doing some sketching. So I wanted to show the update of where I am now. It's the next morning. I don't know if you can tell by the state of my voice, but I just woke up. <laughs> But yeah, so last night I went out and I finished this design as well as the most of the divider page and I just did some simple black line art. I'm thinking that what I want to do for the colors is thinking about how a deck of cards, it's just their red cards and their black cards. So I was thinking about choosing two colors and then trying to make the designs mostly black and white and then that one accent color. So I think I'm going to go in with like one of these like fine liners this is like a brush tip fine liner and kind of fill in some of the chunkier shapes so that it's more blocky and then kind of go in with whatever color i want to do um this is where i am a little unsure of what i want to do i don't love how i did this i originally had done it like trying to do a big like swoopy thing but didn't look very good like that either so i think i might just do something simple and straight across down here and then just like leave some blank space at the top you know just for space to breathe especially because this is pretty busy Alright, so this is where we got. I'm actually really happy with it. Like I said earlier, I feel like doing something this minimal in color is very out of my comfort zone. Like, I just don't usually do stuff like this, but I'm actually really pleased with how it came out. I think it's really simple and cool. Also kind of like witchy or, or fall vibes. I don't know, but I like it. Um, I'm not thrilled about how this area looks, but I mean... I might come back and change some of it later. Um, but yeah, I went with this. So the two colors, I went with the blue and then with this like burgundy pink um, section. And then I wanted to use this gold shade as kind of like um, a way to tie them all together. And I think it looks cool. And now I'm going to work on doing um, a little header for right here. So these two pages usually don't require as much like um, artistic intent, I feel like, because I mean, most of the space is taken up by like actual... Uh, charts and stuff so the only thing that I need to do here is make a little header I think I might do like one card up here as the header and then one header up here I'm not sure what I'm gonna do up there yet but I guess we'll see I just did this little um, header I don't know is this even a header I don't know <laughs> title thing and then I just did my moment spread really simple I did the pretty much the exact same thing over here as I did um, on this page then I just did a little card over here. So I'm just gonna um, do some color for these and then uh, I think we'll be good. Okay guys, so this is the final um, spreads. Thanks for coming on this little journey with me. I feel like this was one of the most ups and downs of decision making that I've done in my bullet journal in a while, but um, I had a lot of fun um, doing these designs. Let me know if you have any ideas for other future bullet journal um, themes or um, if you'd like to see another video like this because I had a lot of fun making this, kind of talking out loud about my design process. So let me know if you want to see something like that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed following along as I make a cool new theme in my bullet journal. Um, if you wanted to see some pictures of this or leave some comments, you can do that here or over on my Instagram um, where I'm a little bit more active. And yeah, definitely follow me over there to keep up to date with day-to-day -day life. Um, and come back next month for a new video.